a Chinese stand-up comedian says something sexist, and it stirs a dangerous debate across China. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Amidst all of the chaos of this past year, there has been one steadily rising power within China. And no, I'm not talking about Chinese leader Xi Jinping's pants, although they continue to be quite high. I'm talking about China's entertainment industry. There's a growing trend of TV shows featuring singing competitions, dance competitions, and even rap competitions. Now you might ask, how can you have artistic expression under an authoritarian regime that works to silence its people and squash the slightest sign of rebellion? Too much freedom of expression can be dangerous. Well, don't worry, because glorious leader Xi Jinping has figured it out. In 2014, she gave a speech saying China should be careful about what kind of foreign entertainment gets promoted. He said many art forms from overseas, such as hip-hop, breakdance, etc., should only be adopted if the masses approve of them while also endowing them with healthy, progressive content. So basically, Xi Jinping thought on breakdancing with Chinese characteristics? Well, kind of. What Xi Jinping actually meant was that he wants to use foreign culture to spread the Communist Party's message, which is why we see things like this, a rap song from Chinese state-run television about China's reforms featuring Xi Jinping. Yes, how do you do, fellow kids? So, Chinese authorities are allowing foreign art forms into China's entertainment industry. It's a way for them to get the party's message across to young, impressionable minds. But there's a potential pitfall. Young, impressionable minds. That's why entertainment shows in China are still closely monitored by the Communist Youth League. Ultimately, the authorities still set China's cultural agenda. But the work of actually realizing this agenda is increasingly decentralized. And as more producers and artists start opening up this new market, it becomes less clear what is and isn't allowed on, say, a national broadcast or a nationwide streaming platform. This is the case for stand-up comedy competition Rock and Roast. The show premiered on Tencent Video, a streaming platform that belongs to tech conglomerate Tencent. Last year, one of the Rock and Roast finalists, Yang Li, did a stand-up comedy routine, for which she was reported to China's National Radio and Television Administration. Why? Well, here's one netizen who reported her for, among other things, alleged acts of sexism, including many instances of hostile discrimination against males and incitement of conflict among the masses and that is detrimental to the harmonious development of China's socialist society. Well, I've got to hand it to this netizen. They know the vocabulary. So what did Yang Li say that was so detrimental to the harmonious development of China's socialist society? You know, <laughs> well, I know she's not talking about me because I'm definitely not average. Now, her punchline doesn't appear to be very radical. It's not even very funny. Not that my jokes are much better, which is why I assume Tencent never invited me to perform on Rock and Roast. Now, despite a rather unoriginal punchline, it stirred up a big debate on Chinese social media over sexism. Clips of her stand-up performance were shared across Chinese social media, and it sparked a movement of women speaking up about their individual experiences facing sexism in Chinese society. Obviously, something needs to be done to stop these women. But despite people reporting her to the higher-ups, China's National Radio and Television Administration hasn't done anything yet. 
probably because they don't view Young as a threat to the party's agenda. But she is getting a lot of blowback from Chinese netizens, male netizens, including vicious attacks from people like law professor Chu Yin at the University of International Relations in Beijing. Wow, that's really uncalled for. I'm pretty sure the problem in China is not brainwashing from corporate society. Meanwhile, Yang isn't afraid of the attacks. She's standing by her words. <laughs> In response to one of her haters, she posted on Weibo, China's version of Twitter, If you don't find it funny, then don't watch it. Thank you. Try doing something more worth your time. You have the guts to attack an entertainment figure, but that's just part of the job. How about instead try to offend people with power, offend the politicians, offend the criminals? Is that an invitation or a death wish? Because if someone went on television and actually offended the people in power and the politicians, I don't think it would be just middle-aged professors attacking them. Let's just say Rock and Roast is not going to roast Xi Jinping anytime soon or rock and roast, will quickly find themselves between rock and hard place. But of course, making jokes about people in power is the essence of good comedy. Some people have even based their entire career on that. I hope it works out for them. And that's why people are warning Yang Li to tread lightly if she wants to veer into socio-political topics. Who knows where this will go? Though for the most part, there has been a positive response to Young. People give her career full support, saying that for there to be a true stand-up comedy show in China, the topics need to be more open. But just how open can it be? It's one thing to talk about sexism. And sure, that attracts a lot of attention on social media, because that's one of the things that people in China are allowed to debate openly. But if a person speaks her mind on political topics, she might find herself whisked away to get re-educated. Of course, if everyone in China speaks their mind, there'll be no way to stop the tide. I mean, how many re-education camps can there be, right? What's that, Shelley? There's 500 in just one region? Okay, never mind. It's gonna be an uphill battle. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You can support the show, too, at patreon.com slash China Uncensored. And I might answer your question at the end of an episode. John Gilmore asks, Are you going to shave your beard off? Why would I shave my beard off? Sure, having a beard means I may not look like a traditional news anchor. But if that's what the people wanted, then Matt would be hosting China Uncensored. That's not what the people want. The people want the beard. Wisdom springs from the roots of this beard, John. Confucius had a beard. Abraham Lincoln had a beard. Chuck Norris has a beard. I think you see my point here, John. And if you don't, I'm going to have to report you to the National Radio and Television Administration for Hostile discrimination against my beard. Thanks for your question. And thank you for watching China Uncensored. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we release the next episode. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.